Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is JT the Talking Head. You are the audience and you are listening to episode 7 of the Masters of Matinee podcast, a collaborative show between content creators who all share a great love of cinema and a passion for physical media. Our co-host today is Zed Zilla and uh, you'll find the tone of this episode to be more relaxed, chilled, laid back. We don't really talk too much about movies in this one, just a fair warn. We're going to go into some more outside of the box subject matter. So without further ado, the Masters of Matinee would like to remind you all to please silence your cell phones and do enjoy the show how's it going everybody my name is jt the talking head you are the audience and i am joined with zedzilla well hello baby and also teo the terminator okay full disclosure <laughs> we were supposed to have teo today this is where I would put my Teo the Terminator. If I had one. If we had one. If we had oh, one. Come on, Teo. You're what? killing me, Teo. Teo had just, he just had to be an adult today. And he had he really, to go to work. He's really taking the turtle thing to heart because he's like slow and steady wins the race. But baby. We're off. And where is he? I don't know, man. I got I, are we the hares though in that in that scenario? Because we're we, uh, we're so far I, ahead. Is he gonna win? Where is are are we far ahead or are we gonna fall behind without his presence today? Uh let's let's see. I don't know. Hey, uh I have some real something really cool that happened to me last night. Um and with it. it I have a shout out to do. And before I do the <sighs> shout out, I wanted to say every single episode, I want to start shouting out one member of our community. Uh, just oh, do a little cool, shout like out that. for everybody. Um, we'll take turns picking who that person is uh, for each episode. But I'm going to take this this episode and I'm going to shout out that canon guy uh, oh. on TikTok. Um. Now that Canon guy makes a lot of really cool videos. Uh, he loves movies, wrestling, stuff like that. Um, he, I think he especially does more horror and stuff and, and all that, but he's super cool. I wanted to congratulate him first and foremost. He just hit 2000 followers on TikTok. What a Woo! friggin' feat, bro. Congratulations. And what, uh, what what the whole thing was that that prompted this is he ran a giveaway, a really awesome giveaway, uh, where oh. he gave away three movies. Which and what are those three movies? I I should have been prepared for this. See, I'm already falling behind. You should have I, been. I've got his video pinned to his profile up right now, where he's talking about it, and I'm going to see. Okay. And this is this, see Teo. This is what happens when Teo's not here. We <laughs> already are falling apart. <clears throat> um, and it's like this where it's pinned on TikTok. I can't, I can't fast forward through it. Oh, he's showing the movies, but oh, he's showing the sides of them now. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. What Slow and it? steady wins the race, baby. <laughs> oh Slow and steady. Slow and steady. <laughs> oh, now he's just showing them sideways. Okay, Lord of War with Nick Cage. Okay. Let's see. He's taking some time on some Lord of War. Uh, loves, top loves secret. The Lord of War. Top secret from the makers of Airplane with Val Kilmer. Uh, oh, I love Val Kilmer. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen either of these two. And then also, and also I apologize if I'm clearing my throat a lot. Um, I just drank some tea and it's coating the back of my throat. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> also... Army of Darkness, Screwhead Edition. Uh, one of my all-time oh, very cool. favorite horror films is Army of Darkness. I love that. It's so to, needless to say, this giveaway was groovy. So I entered very this giveaway groovy. and uh, I won it. I won this and giveaway. A round of applause. Congratulations. So yeah, I won this giveaway. Um, I enter giveaways. We, Zed and I have had conversations about this off podcast. Jesus it, Christ. And I, I make it a, I make it a point to always tag Zed in giveaways 
because I want to annoy him. I want to, I want to give him a notification on TikTok that makes him think that he's popular and then immediately crush his hopes and dreams. Like that is my no, ultimate goal in life. Because legitimately I get from several people and, I, and I, I'm saying this, and if you're listening, don't feel bad about tagging me, but several people in this community will tag me in giveaways. And when I open up TikTok, I'm like, wow, 36 notifications. That's crazy. <laughs> and they're all tags. I don't, I don't enter giveaways, um, but I still am open to you guys using my name to whatever to enter in them. But it just sometimes in those particular moments where you're feeling a little bit frustrated just about life in general, maybe, may, I don't know, maybe you dropped an ice cube on the floor and you're like, I can't bend over to pick it up. So you kicked underneath the, uh, the dining room table and then bada bing, bada boom, grandma slipped and broke her hip. I don't know the frustrations you have in your day. But Wait, why I was grandma, look, why was grandma walking underneath the dining room table though? You don't know how tall my grandma is doing and don't ask me. That's where she sets up her little tent and she has her iPad and her goldfish crackers. And she just sits there and watches knitting videos and, and you know, mm. people lighting themselves on fire and whatever I, grandma does. She's old enough to have her own prerogatives. Suffice to say, I'll open up TikTok and I'll have these 36 notifications and feel very popular, very famous. And then immediately, <laughs> boom, it's just people trying to get free shit. And that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just a little every okay, time. Okay. I, okay, I got a soundboard. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I have a soundboard now, folks. I have a soundboard. So, uh, yeah, I, I get to, you know, a little for me, a little, little applause for me. But, yeah, oh, so I won that. I won that from that Canon guy. Um, you guys go follow him. I'll be doing a unboxing video. He, he literally sent, he, he announced it last night and he, and it was crazy. Also double shout out to Rigo matrix King. I think now he's stuck in the matrix, uh, was what he has changed his name to, but Rigo doubly shout out to him because I wouldn't have known that I won without him. I was, uh, I was really? watching, I was actively watching Mateo on live with uh with leo and john and nerdy dustin and <clears throat> i get a message pop up across my screen that says rigo sent you a message and my initial thought Ooh. as with most messages is i'll get back to it later i'm doing something which i was because i was like engrossed in watching this live with with everybody absolutely but then i was like wait a minute rigo never messages me rigo has like rigo and i have had a lot of interactions like in public space but he has never pm'd me so i was like let's this is interesting enough to warrant attention right now let's go see what he wants curiosity <clears throat> so i click on that message and he says you won man and i'm like like is this did he get hacked as a spam but then no he sent me alive <laughs> i was like what is this and i and i was like i noticed it was that canon guy i was like oh i follow that canon guy and I completely forgot I entered this giveaway, by the way. By the way, this was a giveaway that I did not tag Zed in. Because you enter so many. Because you enter so many. I didn't tag Zed in it. I didn't. So maybe that's. No, I don't remember this one. I maybe don't that's remember the this key. One. So I, I'm the bad omen. Oh, maybe. no. Maybe. Please um, spread the information to everybody that I'm a bad <laughs> omen. Please. So I click on it. And then that cannon guy is like sitting there. I'm so he like starts like freaking out. He's like, Oh, is that him? Is that him? And then Rigo's like, Yeah, this is him. And I'm like, What's up? And he's like, Dude, you won. And like he was getting ready to end his live stream. <clears throat> and I was oh, like, cool. he spun the wheel for the giveaway at the last thing, and I wasn't there. And Rigo came and got me like real quick. And I was so I was there to claim it. I don't know if like if I didn't pop up in the live stream, I don't know if I just wouldn't have won it. Like, I don't know if being in the live stream was something that was like a prerequisite that I had to be in the live stream to win. Sure. Like, so I don't know if he would have respun or what, but I mean, I, either way I came in the live stream and like seeing his reaction, like, and then Rigo and like, it was just like a super freaking hype thing. And th let me tell you, this man's worked so fast. Cause he, I texted him my information last night and he messaged me this morning. He's like, you got Instagram. And so we add each other on Instagram which you can follow me at JT Petri. Uh, and then he just sends me pictures of the box with the tracking label. He's like, it's on its way. And I'm like, damn, sir, you work fast. Baby, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <clears throat> you know, I ain't expecting fast, uh, fast. I ain't expecting Amazon level shipping for, for a free giveaway. Holy moly. <laughs>
That's wonderful. So, like, which out of the three? I know we're not here to pick favorites, but Army of Darkness is the title that you're really excited for, yeah? Yep. Um, I actually think I might already have that particular edition of Army of Darkness. I know I don't have... Uh, what's the other one? The, the one that has Val Kilmer in it. I keep forgetting what it's called. Um, uh, uh, Batman? <laughs> Top Secret. <laughs> uh, Top Secret and Lord of War. I do not have those, so I'm very much so looking forward to those. And also, I know that Lord of War just got a Best Buy 4K steelbook, and I had been eyeballing it, but I'd never seen the movie, so I didn't pull the trigger. So now that I'm getting the Blu-ray for free, I'm going to watch the movie, and if I really, really, really love it, then I might pull the trigger on that. It might be the justification that I need to get it, but I'm glad that I'm getting the movie for free, regardless of if I upgrade it or not. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to look at that uh, top secret movie because I like Val Kilmer a lot and uh, it's from the makers of Airplane. But I think I might already have the uh, Army of Darkness screwhead edition in particular, like that that legit same edition. So <clears throat> I may end up passing on the good juju and doing a a giveaway of my own with oh, army of darkness. Uh, if I already have it, if I don't have it, I'm going to keep it, but I haven't checked my shelves yet, but I think that's the edition that I do own. Um, okay. And I might actually end up giving away my mm-hmm. own personal copy and keeping the one that that cannon guy gave me, because I have a thing. Do you have this thing where like, if somebody gifts you something, I won't, I won't give it away. Like, and I won't sell it. If it, if it came as a gift from somebody, then it's 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 staying with me forever. Um, so, like for example, I have two copies of Down by Law in the Criterion Collection because I had one that I bought years ago, and then a couple years back, my stepmother gave me a copy for Christmas, and I forgot that I owned it already, even though it's one of my favorite sure. movies. I just forgot that I owned it, and so I had put it on the shelf, and it literally wasn't until a few months ago when I made a video on TikTok about double dipping on movies that somebody, some eagle eyed viewer, which I mean, let's, let's be <laughs> honest. Whenever somebody shows off their, like their collection and like a B roll type shot, like we're all you like pause. looking, yeah, you pause. You're like, huh? What wonder what this guy has? Like it's, it's a collector <laughs> thing. We like doing that. You pause. Yeah. It you happens. pause. You're like, you just like looking around. You're like, Oh, they got that. I got that. Ooh, I want that set. You know? So he Absolutely. noticed he was like, cause I was like, I don't double dip too often. But then he was like, why did you double dip on Down by Law? Literally two copies of the same Criterion Edition. And I went and looked and I was like, well, I went and looked and I was like, what? What? And then I was like, holy crap, I do have two copies of Down by Law. So, and one's still sealed. The one that my stepmother gave me is still sealed. But I'm not going to uh, ever get rid of that one that my stepmother gave me because it was a gift. Um, so the one that's sure. already open, I'm planning to do for my 1,000 follower giveaway. Oh, come on. That's beautiful. I love that. That's cool. What is that movie about? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so Down by Law is an amazing film. It's from Jim Jarmusch, um, who is one of my favorite directors. He's very uh, jazzy. A lot of his movies are like black Ooh. and white, a lot of... A lot of, okay. Um, and like they're like down by law was made in the eighties and it was black and white. Um, love that. And so For budgetary reasons or like pure style. Uh, I believe it was more style. Like down by law actually had some money behind it and it had some star okay. power to it. It had, uh, it had, uh, Peter Laurie, who is a, uh, he's a jazz musician and it had Tom Waits in it. Um, oh, yeah, and like Tom Waits was the actual star of it, and so it was incredible. Um, it's it's basically about these three men. They go to prison, and sure. one day they decide they don't like being in prison anymore, and they oh, they of course, stage an escape. Um, <clears throat> without giving away much of the movie, that's that's what I'll leave it at. It's a prison escape movie with freaking Tom Waits in it, man. And it's a great movie. It's so good. Um, and it, in my opinion, it's one of the best. It is definitely top three prison break movies of all time. For me, I know that my top three prison break movies are not what everybody's top three prison break movies are. Cause I, this is hot button, but I don't include Shawshank in my 
in my list here. And why uh, wouldn't you? I, I love Shawshank, but it it does get bumped out uh, because Down by Law exists and Cool Hand Luke exists. And uh, well, I mean, Shawshank might be three. I don't Have know. you ever seen Escape from Alcatraz? That's the one. That's another one with Paul Newman, right? Could be. I know Clint Eastwood's the star of it. Oh, is he? I've only I've only seen it the once. Mm. Um, it's it's based on a true story about three men who uh, attempt to escape Alcatraz, and it, it's a very famous story, very popular story, and uh, to this day, it's still unsolved right. on whether or not the men actually escaped. Um, and it, it's definitely influenced a lot of other stories. Um, but yeah, with the, like the prison prison movies, there's not too many. Like, oh brother, where art thou? Is that a prison movie? I would assume See, so. I think that's a prison it, it, movie. It is. It's a prison break movie, and that is the that is typically my answer for for third uh, prison break movie. But when I really got to thinking about it, I caught myself because I'm like, I don't know. I love well, you Old caught Brother yourself. Right you caught yourself, and then you said, "I love Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay." And you're like, "Oh, I've never, I, I've, like I've never seen that. I've only ever seen the only thing from Harold and Kumar I've ever seen uh, was the scene. I think it was in White Castle when Neil Patrick Harris is like in the back seat and stuff. Like that's oh, of course, yeah. Uh, I think I saw that. He shows up in all of them. Yeah. Um, but I've never actually seen one of those movies, but, but no, Oh brother, where art thou is one that I typically say, but then I, I caught myself and I was thinking, well, no, Shawshank is really good. Like, I think Shawshank could be interchanged with really any of these. I think it's kind of tied. I think they're all kind of tied like for, for best okay. prison break movie, in my opinion. Anyway, I don't, I can't, you, I couldn't put down by law over cool hand Luke and I couldn't put cool hand Luke over down by law. I just love them all so much. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So this, this is a movie that you're planning on giving away when you hit 1,000 followers. How far away are we from this giveaway? Oh gosh, uh, very, very close. Uh, by the time this video goes live, uh, I will probably already have it. Um, Ooh, we're at nine. hit that soundbar real quick hit that soundbar real quick okay, let's okay. get some like applause or something or i don't know what we're gonna get yeah so if if i if i don't hit it by the time you're seeing this my life's a joke it's all teo's fault it's all teo's fault all <laughs> if you don't fault. hit 1000 followers by the time this episode hits then it's all teo's fault i'm at uh, 900 that's cool though 46 946 now you pose the question though like if like you, you pose the question of when someone gives you something but you already have it or maybe it's just something that you're not into piece of clothing piece of like home equipment whatever it might be even a movie do you get rid of it or do you just keep it out of sentimental value or appreciation uh, ten dollars is ten dollars. So if my grandma gives me something that I don't want or I don't need, ten dollars is ten dollars. No, in, in actuality, so, like I'm a double dipper. I'm a double dipper, a hundred percent. Like I have so many, um, like <clears throat> whether it be different editions of the movie or just different covers of the movie, whatever it might be, do that all the time. But I am sentimental in a lot of ways. Like I have saved every card or letter, or even like if someone puts something on a sticky note, I save all that stuff. It's in envelopes and bags and folders and what have you. Um, but like if someone gives you something and like you appreciate it and you think, oh, this is nice, but I'm not going to get use out of it. There's always someone out there that can actually get use out of it. Uh, like, like if, you, if someone gives you a blender and you're like, oh, this is a really nice blender. I appreciate how nice this blender is and how nice of a gift this blender is, but I don't blend stuff. There's always someone out there that blends stuff. Give it to that person. So or sell it. if, if it's a different variant of something that I have, then I will usually keep it. So like, let's put it this way. Like, and I know that this isn't like, this is hypothetical, hypothetical. So Scream Factory released Army of Darkness on Blu-ray years ago. 
like right so if that sure. canon guy was giving away that blu-ray of it i would keep both because they would have different features and stuff like that on them um and then they obviously they have the 4k out now but he, he um if but but i'm pretty sure the edition that i already own is the same edition i just can't i, I can't remember if i own the scream factory version or if i own the screw head edition i think i own the screw head edition uh which is the one that he gave away so, so in this case since i'm having the exact same i will be probably giving away my own personal copy that i've had as long as it's in good condition still which it, it absolutely should be um and keeping the one that that canon guy gave me because it you know he it was a gift so i'm going to keep that and then um it's uh it's it's one of those things where it's like i've also never won a giveaway before i've never won anything in my life like I've never won a raffle at a, at a, you know, a cookout or anything. I've never, I've never won nothing, anything. nothing, not a single thing. Wow. That's the first thing I've ever won. So I, all three of these movies will be kept in my collection forever just because it is the first thing I've ever won in my life. Um, so I, when like with down by law, for example, like I'm giving that away because I do have the exact same thing. But now if we're talking like Christmas gifts or something like from, from Graham Graham, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother yeah. is a very practical person. If you can't get use sure. out of it, let her know and she'll change it up. You know what I mean? So like if, if yeah. she gives me something and I'm like, yo, I already got this. She's like, all right, all right, bet. She's like, I keep the receipts for this reason. I will take it back and you will get the <laughs> money for it. You go get you what you want. You go get well, you what you grand. want. I'm just glad Grandma that understands. She's, she's like, up with it. Yeah, she's up she's, with it. She's like, I'm just glad that you got something to open on Christmas, baby boy. I'm glad you. I'm glad you got to tear into that paper. Which that's uh, always the fun of it. That it, is on Christmas. Every everybody at least needs one present to open up on Christmas. Yeah. Like I and normally I try to like I, I ask my grandmother because she's like, what do you want for Christmas? Money. Cause I always just want money. I'm like, <laughs> y'all ain't gonna be able to buy me nothing that I can't buy myself. I just want money. Or I just want bills paid, whatever. She's like, but you can't open up money. I'm like, sure you can. Put put five dollars in a box and wrap it up. Put and and then give me four boxes with five dollars each in them and let me unwrap them. I'll be just as happy. <laughs> like, geez. Uh, and, and so I'm like, you know, but but I never end up getting money. Um, and have is your family? Because like when there was a period in time where my family at Christmas is uh, switched almost entirely to bags, right? And to me, that laziness uh, just can't fly. Uh, and I will bitch and chew them out every bags step of the way. Bags are so silly. Yeah, it's, bags it's the are worst. for birthdays. No, bags no, are for no. birthdays. A wrap for birthdays, too. Bags if you, are. If you give me no. a bag for my birthday, I won't open it. You won't open it? Nope. You got to wrap that. I Hey, I am, in general, a very non-destructive person until it comes to wrapping paper. That is how I get all of my pent up anger and aggression out is just ravage, like ravagely ripping in to some wrapping paper and imagining that it's like the head of all my enemies. And I'm like a, a fanged beast with claws just tearing their face to shreds. And that's 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 my relationship with wrapping paper. So if it ain't wrapped, don't give it to me, bro. Just give it to me unwrapped. Just tell me to close my eyes okay. and hold out my hands and promise you won't kick me in the nuts. I do agree that the wrapping paper is, is key. It's key for any, like if you're going to give me a gift, I would much appreciate it if it is wrapped. It's, it's a whole experience. Like it makes you, cause you like, you open up the bottom and you're like, Ooh, a barcode. What's this barcode for? And then you see a little logo for something. You're like, I do love whatever that logo is. Yeah. And you're opening up a little bit further and then it's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that. Like it's a, such an experience. It's like, you're digging a hole and, at the bottom of it, there's like treasure or something. Like it's yeah, hundred percent. I I get it. I I'm, I apologize for saying bags are for birthdays. I apologize. <laughs> that's on that's on me. I I'm sorry for that. My family are also like the king and queens of hiding like extras in a in a gift. Sure. So sure, like yeah, you, I have you, a story you, about that too. You, so you yeah, cannot throw away a package a the packaging of what you're getting in at christmas time without fully inspecting no, it because absolutely because you open it up and you're like oh 
a mixer, sweet. And then you flip it over and on the bottom is tape, tape to it is like a $10 bill. And so you're like, oh, that's awesome. And, but, but they won't tell you that they did that because they know where they hit it and they're going to be checking after Christmas is done, after presents are all unwrapped, they're going to be checking where they hid that money. And if you didn't find it, they're keeping it. <laughs> so hundred oh, percent. Um, and then also they are, they, they will 100% reuse boxes. So you cannot oh, trust yeah. that the box you unwrap is the box is what you're getting. So like I've unwrapped yeah. makeup boxes, I've unwrapped hair curlers, I've unwrapped, uh, like a big like mixing box of mixing bowls, Betty Crocker stuff, Tupperware stuff, <laughs> and you just can't trust that that's what you're gonna get. And then I open it up, and it's like 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 there'd be like a big box of like Tupperware, and you open it up, and it's like one movie inside. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah, no, hundred like every year, my immediate family we'll get together with like the extended family and do a like white elephant game where everyone puts in a random gift. You draw numbers and then one through however many people you go in order, you can pick gifts, you can steal gifts, you can swap gifts, whatever it might be. And, uh, uh, my great uncle put in a box, a little cardboard box. It was wrapped up with some wrapping paper. I think it was like green and red stripes. and. My other uncle uh, grabbed the box. You know, it was his, it was his turn. And he opened it up, and it was just a box full of coal, just charcoal. And everyone laughed. Ha 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 ha! You got coal on Christmas. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Well, then it slowly started passing on to other numbers. Like my uncle was kind of like, really a box of coal? Whatever. It was funny. Is what it is. So then more people start going, and then my great uncle who puts in the, who put in the box of coal said, "Hey." dig through the box and everyone was like what and you just hear the entire room go quiet and my uncle starts rattling through all the different coal and he's coals dropping on the floor and people are yelling don't get it on the carpet and finally he gets to the bottom of the box and there's an envelope taped he pulls it out opens up the envelope and it's a hundred bucks and that, that was just one of those things that was just, it was just fun. It was a fun little thing. And that, you know, a hundred percent, I agree. Like with your family and mine, whatever you open up, it's not necessarily what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Uh, one year, um, my, uh, my cousin opened up a vacuum box. It was a really big vacuum box. And she was like, Oh, cool. A vacuum. Like, all right, whatever it is, what it is. And then her father who put it in, was like open it up so she goes and opens it up and it's a fucking owl lamp like a, like someone carved this intricate uh, intricate inter, intricate owl design and it was beautiful and to this day you know she was in college then it has moved all the way down to she now lives in in, in los angeles it's moved everywhere with her and she absolutely like, this is like a key item. Like if, if her apartment was burning down, she'd grab this owl lamp. She absolutely adores it. And it's a beautiful lamp. And uh, there are so many examples of like family Christmases where there's very iconic presents that uh, were just weird. Like one year, uh, the same guy who put in the owl lamp, um, he received a painting he just like went to a garage sale, found this painting and, um, his son got it and, his, and they're, they're a family of artists. And the next year the painting was brought back, but this time the lighthouse, the original lighthouse was now being attacked by a giant purple octopus. It was painted on there. And then That's the next cool. person who got it, brought it back and added something different. And that went on for about a decade. We were just adding more and more stuff. Some people were lazier than others. <laughs> and some years, the painting just never came back. And we were like, where's the painting? It's like, oh, we forgot. 364 days and you forgot? Anyway, I digress. That's just, that's, that's family for you. <clears throat> that's yeah, such a cool very... tradition. That's so, that's it so neat. Cool. And now, and now the painting is above the fireplace at our family cabin. So that's now forever that painting is just, and it, it's a disaster. Like, there's just <laughs> so much random stuff. It completely does not 
it, it encapsulates our family of chaoticness. But like when you, when, when you walk into the room and you look up on the mantle, you're like, what the, what is that? <laughs> like, what is going, is that Bigfoot and a UFO? Um, yeah, but like, but yeah, the, the, it's, it's wonderful. It's got the imprint of every family member who had it. And like, yeah, like I'm a big believer in like that, you know, items and stuff, they get, they get entwined with our energies and stuff that we put out into the world and everything. Like, I mean, I, it's, I'm just one of those kind of people, but like, I mean, Absolutely. everybody in your family that had that, you know, that, that painting now has their mark on it. That is an, that is officially an heirloom, you know? Oh, like, 100%. My mom so did not neat. want to give it up. My that mom so did not neat. want to give it up because she had it in her apartment for a couple of years because it kind of, it came down to the time eventually where folks weren't as excited about it. Um, and she said, well, can I just take it home? And people were like, yeah, go ahead. So it was just up in her apartment for a couple of years until some renovations happened in our family cabin, which the cabin is God, 70 years old. Um, and they redid the whole mantle and uh, somebody messaged and said, hey, can we like bring the painting up north? Absolutely. And the next year, my mom brought it up with her and. It's been there now for a couple of years and it, it's fun. It's a very fun, just wild painting. But um, yeah, there's several examples of just really iconic presence. Cause like nobody buys, not nobody, but like my family is very good at buying very strange items because it's easy to throw in a gift card or to throw in like, like you were saying, like, like household items like like a like a mixer or a blender or what a hat whatever right but then you know then the uncles come in they're like how about a a life-size owl lamp and we're like yeah <laughs> it's cool it's it's really neat that dude christmas at your house sounds amazing it's, uh, it can be fun it can be fun <laughs> i'm going to, i'm going to michigan for christmas this year but y'all oh it's a uh, do you guys get snow yeah a lot, like we had, we actually it didn't snow last year, but like we've had some of the yeah. worst snowstorms in the world, man. Yeah, I miss the snow. Like for me, I'm a I'm a big Christmas guy. I think we might have talked before about how much I love Santa Claus. Oh yeah, I was so, like, like I was getting Christmas. ready to say I'm going to Michigan and we're gonna watch like every Santa Claus movie ever. Dude, I fuck. I am such. Santa Claus is my favorite character of all time. And Christmas is a big deal for me because I just love, I, I love the feeling of being a kid again. And right around Christmas time, there's that bubbly and the tumbly that you're like, Ooh, like I feel like this like childlike wonder again, but the last couple of years we haven't had snow. And that's like one of those key ingredients that like instill the sense of like Christmas is coming and everything. And for some reason, our winters are happening in like January and February. And it's like, what is like, we'll, we'll get snow in October and like on the, like a Halloween, none in December. And then we'll get it. <laughs> we'll get it back in like January and February. And it's, it's, Oh, oh I just no. want snow. Not like a massive snowstorm. Cause I still want to enjoy the family festivities. Just but like Christmas. I want to, I want to hear the crunch underneath my feet and not leaves, not wet leaves. I want to hear snow. Yeah. See, when I was a kid, I loved snow days and stuff, but I hoped that it would snow oh. all the time, except for on Christmas day and on Christmas Eve. Never wanted it to snow then because growing up, my grandpa worked for the department of highways. And if it snowed, on Christmas, it wasn't there. He had to go and salt roads and you know, uh, snow plow and stuff like that. So I never oh, wanted it to see, snow on yeah. Christmas, uh, just because I knew that if it did, he had to work. And that's the one day that, regardless, uh, one day a year, I think that everybody, what regardless of your religious beliefs and regardless of if you celebrate Christmas as Christmas, I think that. Christmas at this at this point is so past so far past religion at this point that I think that it needs yeah, to be commercialized. <laughs> well, no, not even commercialized. I just think that it needs to be that one day a year that like everybody just should spend together with their families if they have the yeah, ability sure. to do so. Whether you're whether you're getting into the holly jolly shit or if you're just sitting around talking and with no Christmas tree up, 
leave your religion at the door and you don't have to celebrate it as Christmas. But I just think that that day should always just be consecrated as a family day, as a day to be with people you love. And, and I think that's that every human being needs that one day, at least a year that they're all together, like all day. And it's, that's important to me. And then whenever, whenever it would snow when I was a kid and see my, my whole family worked for it. My grandmother worked for it for them too. And my, mom worked as a secretary there um but they didn't have to work whenever it was snowing the only people that had to work on christmas were the dispatcher so i always felt bad for dispatchers and the people who had to go out and salt and salt and plow the roads so that was always sad whenever it would snow on christmas but you say like sweetheart you say it like would it would snow in october and stuff we get some snow in october but like it'll snow here all the way up until like april Sometimes here, but not always. Uh, up north, well, where I'm at, closer to Detroit, uh, March is usually when our snow starts melting. Uh, but if you go up north, oh my God, yeah, it can it can go in until um, April or May. So, what is like? What's like the climate like up there in Michigan? Is it like, cause I know you're like, you're out there by like the great lakes and stuff. Does it oh, get, absolutely, yeah. does it get like blistering cold and stuff in the winter? Uh, yeah, of course. Especially as you get closer to the lakes, because all that wind coming off of, of the water is just frigid. Uh, I've only been able, like, like, like I've mentioned, like my family has a cabin uh, up North and that's where that painting is, is homed. Uh, and we're on the lake. Like we're not, we don't like, we're on the lake. So there are giant, like just chunks of ice being crashed up onto the beach and what have you. Um, so it, it can get extraordinarily frigid because of being surrounded by water. I mean, <clears throat> but like we get all seasons. We are very lucky that each season we get it and it, and it we don't, we're not like the Southern states that get a lot of heat and then maybe get some fall, uh, in spring. Like we get every single season, hardcore when it's summer, it gets hot when it's, you know, fall, we get, um, you know, the leaves fall and, 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 and it's kind of like a, like a more tempered climate and, and then winters winters is, is, is kind of Michigan's, uh, that's kind of our thing uh, because we're so close to Canada. We're kind of Canada 2.0. Um, our winters can get pretty badass. <laughs> yeah. If you look up pictures of like Michigan lighthouses during the winter time, they don't look like, they don't look like lighthouses. They just look like giant chunks of ice, like Elsa's castle. They are <laughs> just absolutely covered in ice. And we have a lot of lighthouses around. A lot of haunted lighthouses. I have some stories about haunted lighthouses that I've experienced. Um, but absolutely. What about you guys? I I want to get back to the haunted lighthouses um, on an episode okay. in October. I would like to do that. Oh, I have a lot of ghost stories. But I live in a haunted house. I have a lot of stories. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. Like uh, this October, I'm planning something big with all the masters. I want each episode that everybody's on to tell their favorite ghost experience along with like our favorite horror movies and stuff like that. So October favorite ghost for, experience. Oh, no. For for me, October is a huge month for me because my birthday is October 24th. Exactly one week before Halloween. Um, and Halloween's my all time favorite holiday. Like I keep it Halloweeny up in here all year round. Like I got my CRT TV. Absolutely. You guys have seen on my TikTok. I've got like a string of like Christmas lights around my, my CRT TV, but it's not Christmas lights. They're purple lights and they're bats from Halloween. And I like, I just keep it up Halloween up in here all the time, man. <laughs> love Halloween. I love, so, I love how you were like, I have Christmas lights around my TV. They're not Christmas lights. They're bats. They're Halloween lights. <laughs> well, well, they are, but they're, they're like the same kind of like light bulbs. Like, um, the, well, the same yeah, ones that you they're, just Halloween light. they're just string lights. They're just string lights, right? Yeah. String lights. Yeah. Um, there you go. There is some huge stuff coming to masters of matinee on, uh, the month of the entire month of October. So I'm just going to tease that now since we're, a few months out from that, we're getting stuff together. Um, but yeah, I want to hear 
can about I, some haunted lighthouse can stuff. I tell you something now. Mm-hmm. So you you were saying this this is this is this could be a paranormal story, but you know why not? We'll we'll do a little one, and I'll save some more some better ones for later on. But so you're talk, talking about Halloween. You love Halloween, and I do too. My my grandfather who who passed away back in 2018, Halloween was his jam. We had local newspapers come out every single year to take pictures and and whatever of his entire setup. My grandpa drove multiple hearses. Uh, over the years, which if you don't know what a hearse is, it's a funeral car. That's where they put the coffins in the back. You see them driving down the highway all the time. Um, and he owned a couple of those. So every time we'd show up at the local Kmart to hunt for Hot Wheels, we showed up at my grandpa's hearse. Big Halloween guy. Uh, the entire house was always just covered in animatronics and decorations and just all that stuff. Well, he was telling my grandma, you know, when I pass, keep the hearse keep the hearse uh because he already he already had one and sold one and then bought a new one he's like just keep the hearse you can drive it my grandma's like i am not driving this hearse i'm just not doing it like you like my grandma even didn't like getting in in it like to to, to go with my grandpa to places she's like i'm not driving the hearse and she and, and my grandpa's like well then give it to somebody who who would, who would want like give it to a family member or whatever and she's like no i'm just gonna sell the hearse and my grandpa's like if you sell the hearse I'm going to haunt that person. My grandma's like, no, you're not, Bob. Get out of here. You're being ridiculous, whatever. My grandpa ends up passing away back in 2018. And uh, a few months thereafter, my grandma sells the hearse. Uh, she sells it to somebody who actually was a collector and uh, had come several years taking pictures of my grandpa set up for like no- local newspapers and, and websites and what have you. So this is a person I kind of knew just because he had shown up over the years. So he buys my grandpa's hearse and a week later, a tree falls onto it and destroys it. No shit. Just a week later, my grandma receives a Facebook message with a picture of a tree inside of my grandpa's hearse. (laughs) Wow. So, so take that how you will. I don't know. You know, again, coincidence, I don't know. I don't think my grandpa would be malicious enough to like crush somebody's car, but like it was just one of those things where she, where my grandpa was very adamant. Please keep the hearse, and if you sell it, I'm gonna haunt the person. In jest, it was supposed to be funny or whatever, but then the car is totaled just a week later. That's crazy. So, so do you do you believe in like? life after death. Oh my gosh. I, I, it, I have to, because I've experienced too much to say that there's nothing. That's how I am. Um, and it's, it's not even a question. Is there something after, but what that is, I don't know. And I don't think that's my place to say, I can speculate. I can have ideas and I can throw stuff out there. I'm not a religious man by any means. But I do believe that there, there, there is something afterwards. Maybe not for everybody. I'm not saying that if you're a bad person, then you don't get an afterlife. But maybe there is such a, such a thing as unfinished business, and that's one of many, many reasons somebody can stay behind. Who's to say? But I've just experienced. I've experienced and have gotten uh, secondhand um, encounters and experiences that are too reputable. And I trust them too much to say that, oh, you're lying. Um, my mom, for instance, when when I was uh, a teenager, uh, kids were playing with Ouija boards. And, you know, you go to like sleepovers and whatever, and, and people are playing with them and, you know, the kids bring them. And it was just kind of one of those things. And she told me, like, listen, if you end up playing with one of these things, she's like, I don't want you to. But I can't prevent you from doing it because obviously I'm not going to stand there behind your shoulder while you're playing spin the bottle or, you know, comparing dick sizes with your friends. I'm just not going to be there for that. Um, But if they bring out a Ouija board and if you participate, say goodbye. And she was and her tears are welling up in her eyes. Say goodbye. And she's very like she is like. Now it's no longer like. 
this is this is something that I can see is very very much so affecting her. And it only it took me about a year or two to build up the confidence enough to ask my mother, why did you tell? Because like I was scared at that point. I was like, I am not even going to be in the room when they bring out a Ouija board. Like because because the way my mom reacted was so intense. And it, and it took me a year or two to build up the confidence to ask her why. And to this day, I still haven't gotten like the most concrete answer because she's too afraid to talk about it. But what I know is my mom didn't say goodbye once upon a time and something attached to her for multiple years. And it fundamentally changed her existence. And uh, so, yes, I have a, I, I believe in life after death in a sense, but what that is, I don't know, but I've experienced way too much to not believe. I'm very much the same way. Um, I, first off, I'll say I'm, I'm, I'm a very hardcore skeptic. I do not immediately jump to ghost every time something goes wrong. no you have to fuck you have when something happens immediately you have to debunk it there has yeah. to be a rhyme or reason why it happened but if you go through all those steps and you really can't come up with something there you go i'll tell you a quick little ghost story that happened to me literally the other night um so I'm Ooh, like, fun. I'm convinced. I, lo- I love that it's October already. Yeah, <laughs> little, little taste. I've, well, I've had a lot of. Like, I used to be a ghost hunter. I have so many stories. If we tell a couple today, it's not even gonna. <laughs> there's so there's plenty more for October. I'm, I'm please going go ahead. To, I'm going to title this episode. Teo stepped out for cigarettes, and <laughs> and Zed and JT talked about Christmas and ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> dad daddy forgot to take us trick-or-treating so we're just telling ghost stories <laughs> um but so my stepfather died in december of 2021 and yeah. ever since then there has been some unexplained phenomena going around in my house uh sure. s- little things that are the kind of stuff that i would 100 percent expect my stepfather to do if he were a ghost and trying to fuck with us. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So stuff like I have my whole movie shelf here. Okay. And I'll walk out of the room, go to the bathroom and I'll come back. And then there are movies that are like stuck out. Like, like it's like somebody like touched them and pulled them out. Like to look at the, what the title was. Well, they're and, looking for the secret, the secret entrance, like the hidden door. Yeah. Like pulling out the books. Yeah. yeah. But there's been like multiple movies that are like pulled out like that. Right. Do they spell out something? Oh, I didn't, oh man. I didn't, I didn't even look at that shit. Like, like the first word of each title, like, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, if that happens again, I'll have to look at, I'll have to look out for that. But, um, the other night, a couple weeks ago, uh, my, my mom was out of town. My sister was out of town and my wife and I were letting our dog outside at about maybe midnight or so. And I had my TV on in my bedroom and yeah. I was standing in the doorway. My wife was outside on our, on our little sidewalk out front with, and the dog was on the leash. And we both hear this really loud, like, 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 like sounds like, like white noise, but more less static and more like electronic, like something that a TV would make. And so I'm like, what on earth is that? And so I'm like, I go around and investigate. I go to my room and the TV's turned on, but it's not making any noise. It's not messing up or anything. And I'm like, I don't know what that was. And then I walk, I go back out to the living room and Desi's like, I, that sounded like it came from upstairs. Now our, our upstairs is unfinished. Um, sure. And so I'm like, no, I thought it came from our bedroom. She's like, no, it came from upstairs. And then it happened again. I'm like, that 100% came from our bedroom. She's like, no, I hear it from upstairs. And she's like, go check upstairs, take the flashlight and check upstairs. She's like, I, there might be something or somebody up there, like an animal or whatever. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I take the flashlight and I go upstairs. 
Now, a few days prior, I had gone upstairs because I had set up my CRT TV and my VHS player, and I knew that I had a box full of tapes and an, an old DVD player up there that I wanted to hook up to the CRT TV. And I was looking yeah. for them everywhere, and I could not find them. And so Ooh. I go up there at 2 o'clock in the morning. Or not 2 o'clock. That's probably around midnight. It was between midnight and 2 a.m. <laughs> I can't remember exactly when it Stop was. Stop lying, JT. Um, so... I go upstairs and I'm looking around and I'm getting just the worst vibe possible. Like it is just a heavy vibe, man. And so I'm just looking around, I'm checking all the corners, checking in the knee walls and all this shit. And boom, there in the floor, my DVD player sitting on top of my box of VHS tapes. And you um, looked there previous. Yes. I'm like, what the fuck? So I pick him up and I take him. I'm like, well, whatever. Thanks. So, so I, I was coming down the stairs with them in my hands. And yeah. I have I have the flashlight on me too. And the flashlight we have is like one of those super high powered rechargeable LED lights that are like super bright. It's like five thousand lumens or something. Like because we live yeah, out the, in the middle they'll of the blind a pilot and a plane and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We well we live out in the middle of the woods on top of a mountain, so like we need that to like watch out for coyotes and stuff and we let the dog out at and night. Bigfoot and, like and bear and yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm coming down the stairs and I've got this big box of VHS tapes in my hand and I've got this DVD player in my hand and I asked Des, I'm like, Hey, can you come here and help me grab this before I drop it? And I had now this flashlight, it's got a strap on it. And I had the strap over my shoulder and the light was still on. I start walking down the stairs and now the flashlight had a full charge in it and it starts flickering. Yeah. It starts flickering. And then I, I get to Des and when I hand off the movies to Des, the flashlight goes off and completely cuts out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Did this thing just die? And usually whenever it is about to die or, or it's dying, the light starts to dim slowly. Like it's got like like a precaution thing. Of so course, it, won't, yeah. it won't die all at once. The, the light will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer over time to tell you, hey, you need to charge this. It was bright as can be. I had just taken it off charge previously and it completely died on me. And I waited yeah. like five minutes and it turned right back on. So that was just a weird, weird night. And I have more ghost stories that are way creepier than that but that was like it's I was, not even it's to me it's not even the creepy stories that get me it's just kind of like the the random occurrences that are like too bizarre to really explain off but they're not like scary right. but they're just like what was that yeah yeah exactly we have um a flag uh flagpole in our front yard yeah. And around the flag is like a bunch of like gravel and we have like a little dedication, kind of like Memorial garden type thing to my stepdad because he was, a, he was in the Marine Corps and we have the American flag. And then below we have the, the USMC flag and okay. the like string that you pull up on, like to pull the flag up. It was a little bit yeah. loose and it was a very still night. And I, when I was, uh, when I did ghost hunting, I use what's called a pendulum. So it's like yeah. a piece of metal on a string and it attunes to energy and you can use it to ask questions to spirits and so on and so forth. If it swings clockwise, that's yes or a positive energy. If it swings counterclockwise, it's no or a negative energy. And this string on this flagpole, flagpole on a pot, like a still night was swinging clockwise. And I asked out, I was like, Sam, is that you? And it kept swinging. I was like, if that's you, Stop swinging and it stopped immediately. I said, Can you swing it counterclockwise? Started swinging counterclockwise. I, I wasn't touching it, it was just hanging. Sure, there. I was a like, Calm uh, night, yeah. I was like, And the wind wouldn't blow it two different ways on command. I was like, Okay, that's cool. That was super, and that, cool. and that, that is cool. It's, it's always nice to get confirmation from. Loved ones. And I have a couple of those stories, but I, I want to leave those for October because I think they're going to be, especially with more people in, in the call, possibly who want to, who want to uh, join in on the, on the podcast. It could be fun, but so, I'll tell my most recent or one of my most recent ones. My most recent story, it takes place at my mother and my little brother's apartment. So they live about 45 minutes away from us, from where I live. 
and I go visit from time to time. And um, I would say it's close to a month ago now. I was just spending a couple of days there hanging out with my little brother. It's summertime. He's off and, and my mom. Well, me and my brother are, are night owls, typically, and on this particular night, we were both up fairly late. He was playing his game in his, in his in his bedroom, and I was just sitting in the living room watching TV, movies, whatever I was watching. Well, um, I'm laying there in my bed, which we basically make a cot on the floor. I'm laying there in my little cot, and I hear um, this large commotion in the hallway now my mom's apartment is not large it's i mean you think of an apartment that's what my, mom, my, my mom's apartment is it's it's nothing luxurious but it has very tall ceilings <laughs> for some reason very tall ceilings but i digress doesn't it's not important to the story um but i hear this commotion in the hallway uh and i recognize it being like my little brother's door because there's a very particular way you have to open it. And I'm like, what the hell was that? And I'm expecting to see my little brother around the corner or to see him or hear him rather close the bathroom door. Because I hear this weird commotion. Like it sounded like this like rattling and then like a rattling. You, you know, when you're reading that Christmas book where it's like, th this like clattering noise, like, uh, like the ladder clatters or whatever. The, that's what I heard in the hallway. Just this clattering noise. Very bizarre. So I text my little brother because he's not appearing. He's not coming around the corner to fill up his water bottle. He's not going to the bathroom. And I can't see him in the... My mom has picture frames. And the way that they're hung on the wall, uh, in unison with the, the lamp in the hallway, you can see my little brother come in and out of his bedroom. So I, I just didn't see him at all. And I text him. I'm like, what the hell was that noise? He texts me back not 30 seconds later. I don't know, but I heard it too. And then he FaceTimes me and he says, let's investigate it together. And as I, as I, as he says that I hear him open his door. So I get up and I walk in the hallway and just laying down on the carpet is a hanger, like a clothes hanger. Now, my little brother has the uh, this little hook on his door, hung on his door, where our mom puts up his uh, washed and dried clothes so that he can hang it up in his closet. So he has a bunch of like t-shirts and whatever hanging on his door. Well, my little brother is a bit of a germaphobe, um, so he takes uh, religious showers every to, and when he wakes up, and especially before he goes to bed. He will not get into his bed without taking a shower first. Um, so he uses clothes like crazy. Like he showers at least twice a day. So he, he, he rarely ever takes these shirts off his door and puts them in his closet. He just rips them off the hanger hanger. We're looking at this hanger laying out on the floor and it's noticeably bent. It's not a metal hanger. It's a plastic hanger, but the bottom of the hanger is bent. Like it's pulled outward. Like if you're pulling like a bow and arrow. And as a kid, like I played with those hangers all the time and I would pretend there are bows and arrows and I'm looking at it and we're, and, and we're both just like confused. And for some reason I pick up the hanger, I hang it back on the hook. And then I pull down on it and let it go and boing, 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 doo -doo -doo -doo, that exact same noise is replicated. And we both just look at each other and we're like, holy shit, something just yanked on this hanger and let it go. And it just bounced off the hook and made that giant clattering like noise and then land on the floor. Again, our mother's asleep. We're the only two in the apartment. He was inside of his bedroom. He did not exit his bedroom again because i didn't hear his door open i didn't see him open his door and then obviously like it, nothing added up until i just picked it up hung it back on the hook pulled down on it and let it go because my thought was why the fuck is the hanger bent like his clothes are not particularly heavy none of his other hangers are bent so if this was like something that was an occurrence for my little brother where he was bending hangers, why would only one be bent? And then also, why the fuck is it on the floor? 
so all those things happened and it wasn't until the next, like the following afternoon that we told our mom cause she woke up, went to work and then she came home. Um, but yeah, that's my most recent one where it was just bizarre. Like we just couldn't figure it out. And, and again, is that what happened? I can't tell you definitively. We didn't have a camera pointed at it, but the way that I replicated it and the way that we replicated it, cause obviously my little brother took a, took a shot at it next. That's what, that's what we heard. And I, he was closer, obviously being inside the bedroom and, uh, that, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That is bizarre. That is bizarre. Um, do you think that like there, there could have been like a coat or something hanging in the closet that maybe got snagged on it? Like maybe it just kind of slid off or whatever and snagged on it. it. Wa- it but it wasn't inside of his closet. It was on his door, like in like the door, like the, the back of, or I guess the front of his oh. door facing out into the hallway. Like there was like, there was clothes on the hanger on, on the, on the, uh, hook. Uh-huh. But the, but then they're they're just random uh, hooks that didn't have anything on them because my little brother had used the uh, the hooks. Here's the thing: if it just fell off because my little brother was opening and closing his door, and the hook and the and the hanger just so happened to get uh, to the point where it was slipping off and it finally fell off, I could accept the hanger just falling off the hook. But not. But like it was the noise like that, that made. Kind of noise. Yeah, it sprung like the noise of it springing off the door. Like if it just fell on the floor and I heard like a little like just like a little thud, I'd walk in the hallway and think, "Oh, that's weird. Oh, it must have been falling off." And that, uh, but but it's sp- like the, the noise of it springing off the door, clattering against things, like it bounced off things and then landed on the floor. And it was exactly replicated when I pulled down on the hanger and let it go, and bing, bang, boom. That's the noise. Again, I can't tell you that's what happened, but when I when I replicated what I thought might have happened, that was the noise. Yeah, dude, that is nuts. My mom's apartment is like a hot spot. Ooh. I, we don't know what it is. We have no idea what it is. We, my mom actually just talked to a medium the other day. Uh, one of her friends from work, her best friend since childhood, has just always been able to talk to the dead. And they got in contact and they just spoke for a little bit. It's not like <clears throat> it's, it's fairly malevolent. It's not, it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's harmful in any way. Um, it, it's more of a trickster, I suppose, if I, if anything, mm-hmm. where it, I, it, it may be a, an instance of we're the only one that's kind of, um, seeing it and we're interacting to it and we're, and we, we are reacting to it so that, it, so it spends more time in our apartment, but it could be apartment hopping. We have no idea what the circumstances are, but, uh, we think that it may just be because we are more open to it and we are reacting to it. And it's like one of those things of like, whether it be one year or 50 years, if you're getting a reaction and some type of communication as a spirit, you may just want to like keep that going. <laughs> right. Cause it's like, finally I'm, I can talk to somebody or I'm like at least interacting with somebody, but yeah, it's a hot spot. I mean, the amount of times I'm sitting in the chair at my mom's place and just a shadow figure just like peers out from behind the refrigerator or like my little brother sees it walking across the kitchen all the time or like, like you'll see people like when, 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 when I was staying at my mom's house, uh, several, like a few months ago now, my little brother went out of town to his dad's and I'm laying in his bedroom and I know my mom's asleep. I know she is. My mom rarely gets up to use the restroom in the middle of the night and I'm laying there. And again, there's a, there's a lamp in the hallway wow. and not on the bottom of the door, but the top of the door, I just see a shadow slowly go across. I don't hear anything. So I'm just like, what the hell is that? So I text my mom. Are you in the bathroom? Expecting that, you know, she'll probably check her phone or whatever and and nothing. So then I, I kind of just get up and I look outside. There's nothing there, obviously. And then I ask her the next morning, like, hey, did you use the restroom at all? 
And she's like, no, like she, well, not, yeah. When she woke up at like three o'clock in the morning, cause my mom wakes up super ridiculously early. She's like, no, I haven't used the bath- bathroom at all. And I was like, okay, well, I heard, I didn't hear, I saw somebody walking that direction. And she was like, yeah, Cannon sees it all the time, which Cannon's my little brother. Like Cannon sees it all the time. And I'm like, interesting. And I experienced other stuff in his bedroom too, that he also experienced or experiences <laughs> anyway that's, that's that, nuts man just a lot, lot, lot of nothing nothing crazy necessarily but just lots of activity it, it's constant that's the thing it's constant i wanted to just real quick maybe brainstorm on the pod and and kind of put it out to our listeners too um Ooh. what you guys would think about uh trying to get all of the masters together for a super show uh for halloween Ooh. um where we're all in the same episode uh which we have we have discovered it is difficult to get us all together at the same time <laughs> but um, Teo, that, <laughs> that darn Teo, i'm telling you um but uh no, Teo, we love you. We seriously, I we understand you had to go and have responsibilities, I guess. But um, yeah, like so, I would like to do maybe a super show. I'm just gonna kind of put that out there, put the feeler out there. I'm not announcing anything or foreshadowing anything, but I think it would be cool to get us on to all talk about our favorite horror movies as well, as well as like our own favorite personal ghost experiences and stuff. I have a few cool ghost stories to tell myself and. And uh seems like there's there's new ones popping up every day. It seems like there's new ones popping up for you every day too, Zed. So Oh baby, I'm telling you. That sounds super exciting. Yeah, so that would probably be when is Halloween this year? What what day of the week is it? I wonder. Let's see. August, September. Um October thirty first. Oh my gosh, Zed, you ain't gonna believe this. It's on a blues day Tuesday. It is meant oh. to be come on yes sir yes sir halloween october 31st this year falls on that's our Tuesday, day Tuesday. that is amazing i uh, wait hold on when is christmas fall when's christmas let's see if it's a tuesday i'm gonna shit a brick no it's a monday oh Dang. come on so close next year next year christmas we'll have a chokehold on christmas yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll do. I mean, we're gonna do. We're gonna do Christmas. Like the whole month of October and December will be dedicated to spooky and holly jolly. Like it's just gonna Absolutely. be. That's just gonna be how it is because we're all gonna be in that kind of mood anyway, and that's the kind of content that we're all so. gonna be wanting to make. So, so we're gonna be do, talking about that like all month long. But I would love to be able to do a a Halloween super show, and then maybe next year. Well. Now next year, getting getting us together to do a full show for Christmas might be a little bit harder since it is the holiday season. We don't, we'll just have to record it on Halloween in prep for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but all right, I'm gonna wrap this episode here. This has been a much more relaxed episode. Zed and I just decided to kind of since Teo wasn't gonna come and and talk to us because he's an adult with adult responsibilities. We decided to get yeah, on and just tail. and just shoot the shit. So uh, this is this didn't have any rhyme or reason to it. We just wanted to have a little discussion. I know this one didn't feature many movies, but you can expect that from time to time. You know, we're not always going to be talking about the movies and everything we're every people. single time. We're people. We like to discuss things. So I think this will make a fun little chilled out episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go follow Zed at Zedzilla Movies on TikTok. And uh, Zed, you just made a new letterbox is that right what is your new letterbox account i did it's at zedzilla i decided my previous one was uh was a little bit cluttered so at z-e-d-z-i-l-l-a at zedzilla is my new account feel free to follow if you'd like yeah y'all y'all, y'all go follow him did you did you keep your old account too or just completely yeah deleted? all my old accounts i have two previous ones one underneath like my my uh, my government name and then uh, one underneath, you know, yeah, yeah. So I, I keep them all just because they have lists and whatever that are right. organized, and you know, so yeah, I kept them. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you guys go follow Zed. You can follow me at JT Talking Head on Letterbox as well. And um, look out at the end of July because we've we've all kind of decided to do the uh, what you're watching for a, each month too. So that'll be that'll be kind of cool. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one. And boom, there it is. Another great episode of Masters of Matinee is in the books. Did you have fun? We certainly did, and we'd like to thank everyone who has been listening along and would like to remind you to go ahead and follow Masters of Matinee on YouTube, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Special thanks to this week's co-host, Zedzilla, who can be found on TikTok at Zedzilla Movies. Remember to also follow me on TikTok, your gracious host, JT the Talking Head, and YouTube at JT the Talking Head. And I'm also on Letterboxd doing written reviews. You can find me there at JT Talking Head. Know the... Thank you all so much for listening to this awesome collaborative effort and be sure to join us next week and every single Blues Day Tuesday. Thanks again for dropping in, listening to us talk about the things we love, movies, physical media. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Go for it, Zed. Hey folks, I'm Zed, and today we're going to teach you how to siphon drinkable water from your local YMCA swimming pool in case of an apocalyptic event. Yeah, that's that's one at the end of this episode, for sure.